from the Allegheny to the Ohio and Pittsburgh. Allegheny to the Ohio. Allegheny to the Ohio. They're joining up in the CIO in Pittsburgh. Lord God, Pittsburgh. Good evening. Uh, today I figured I was out here cleaning up my garage and trying to order bottles around here in our limited space and uh, I found a collection of bottles from the Pittsburgh area I figured I'd share with you tonight. And uh, I found out after going through all my bottles I had a little collection of uh, Heinz bottles. Which is right here I got a little collection of them here. I figured I'd talk a little bit about them. Um, the company was started by H.J. Heinz back in uh, 1869. And uh, he came over with his uh, parents from Germany and uh, German immigrants to uh, Pittsburgh area. Uh, his father was a brickmaker, and during the course of his childhood, he decided he wanted to try to start making ketchup at some point. I'm not an expert at this, but you can check this all out. There's a great his uh, museum in uh, Pittsburgh called the H.J. Heinz Museum. Um, it has a lot of different things there, too, as well. But these are some of the things I found over the years. And uh, they had a whole bunch of different varieties of bottles. Uh, the famous saying is Heinz 57, which uh, upon a little bit of research and some reading, I found out it doesn't actually mean anything at all. Um, he liked number seven, and his wife's uh, lucky number is number five, so he made it 57. And uh, the uh, website, at least what I was reading, made it sound like he picked the number up pretty much random. So there weren't just 57 varieties, or there was much more than 57 varieties. But that's a little bit of history behind that. Um, I guess I'll start here with the oldest bottle. Uh, this bottle here, um, I got it at a yard sale probably about 20 years ago. And it actually has the name Heinz and Noble on it. And uh, Heinz and Noble, that was the original company that started in 1869. It was a friend of his that uh, Heinz met at a brick factory. And they had a company together and they eventually went bankrupt in uh, 1875. So this bottle is anywhere between those six years of period, between 1869 and 1875. Uh, it says Heinz and Noble, Pittsburgh, PA. And it kind of looks like a little cathedral pickle type bottle. It's probably what was in it, one time pickles or something like that. Looking at another pickle bottle here, this is uh, the H.J. Heinz Company bottle here. Uh, it's also made in Pittsburgh, PA, of course, like all these bottles. But uh, I'm not really sure how they fit pickles in here, but from the advertisement I found, this bottle here held uh, mixed pickles or horseradish. But the example I found online was mixed pickles. So over the years, uh, Heinz, the company, made a whole bunch of different types of uh, ketchup bottles. And, um, you know, ketchup was uh, not uh, Heinz's first type of product they sold. Uh, there's a big history behind uh, ketchup. It goes back many hundreds of years. But early on, ketchup was actually made from fish. And uh, uh, early days, back when, um, especially even up until around when the Heinz company started, there was a lot, not a very good reputation with uh, ketchup. First off, uh, back in the day, they actually had a lot of alcohol in it. And also, uh, it was made of fish before all that. And they kind of changed the recipe over to more like organic uh, stuff, I guess, at some point. So, by the time that the Heinz company started, they started making ketchup. Uh, it still had alcohol in it. Um, from what I read, alcohol and sugar really mix well. It was a real tart type mixture. And then it uh, eventually turned over to the more sweet variety that we understand today. And um, so, I guess they, they prohibited the. Uh, any type of additive with such an alcohol in 1906. Um, some companies even use stuff like pine tar to add to their um, ketchup to try to preserve it. Um, and I read too that um, the Heinz company, uh, all the ketchup balls were made clear. Back in the day, uh, apparently there was a little bit of a Ponzi scheme going on where some uh, manufacturers of ketchup would actually use colored bottles or try to mask what they were trying to sell because they were adding pine tar and other uh, junk to the, the ketchup. And uh, the Heinz company, it prided itself on a real clean factory and a very good product. So they put all their ketchup in a clear bottle so the uh, 
consumer could see exactly what they were buying. And that was back around the time that still, ketchup still had that uh, stigma of not being safe. Um, it was notoriously known for growing mold, going bad, sour, all this type of stuff. And Heinz Company really set the standard back then for you know good ketchup apparently. This bottle here was produced between 1889 and 1910. It's one of the more fancier ketchup bottles. And as you can see in the front here, it says uh, tomato ketchup, Pittsburgh, USA. And on the back, it has a little key stand there where the label would have been. I'm not sure if they had different varieties of ketchup back then or not, different flavors, but there would have been a label here and a metal top on it. It has a screw top, but it's still from the uh, 1889 to 1910 era. This bottle here was uh, produced sometime around the same time as that bottle, but also I think this one here might be a later one, maybe maybe more from 1910. But it has the uh, Keystone label on it, and these bottles are kind of hard to see because they're so clear. But um, it says the H.J. Heinz uh, Company, Pittsburgh, PA. And I always look to see if there's an H on Pittsburgh or not. For a period of time, uh, Pittsburgh dropped the H off the end of the name of the city. Uh, it was only for a short period of time, I think between 1890 and 1910, somewhere in there. But all these have H's on them, so they're probably before or after that little time period there. This is the last Heinz bottle I have here. This one here is not very old. This is probably from the 1930s, 1940s. And this was a fancy uh, pickle bottle, or they call it fancy pickles or something like that. I have an advertisement picture I found. Um, this is kind of a neat little bottle. It says Heinz on the bottom. Um, that's how I always know. Sometimes Heinz didn't always emboss their bottles. They had a roll like a colorful labels on their bottles. And the only way you can tell sometimes today when you find something in the woods or dig it up, look at the bottom. And then this doesn't go with the bottle, but this is actually a condiment um, topper that says 57 on top. It was a Heinz, uh, like it would have been like for a mustard jar, probably like a, a bas baseball game or some, somewhere where they had condiments for sale. And that would be a place for the spoon to sit in there and you know, protect the, the product. There's a few more bottles up here too. These are different uh, varieties of uh, other condiment bottles from uh, competing companies. And um, you know, obviously, you know, we, we don't hear of very many companies today. It's either Heinz or Hunt's or some other company. But it's kind of a neat glimpse of the variety back in the day that people had to choose from. Um, one of the interesting facts I found out, um, uh, H.J. Hines, uh, he was a, a brick maker and his father went on vacation back in the early 1860s, 1870s in Europe. And while he was gone, he took it upon himself to enlarge his father's house while he was not in the area. It might have been before that time period. But that very house that stood down by where the uh, old uh, Heinz factory is in Pittsburgh today. And at some point they were adding on to a building and had to move that. And uh, they put it on a barge and moved it. I guess they took it the way to uh, Michigan, up to the Henry uh, Ford uh, place. I think it's called uh, Greenfield Park. It's a Henry Ford Museum. I also found out too that H.J. Uh, Heinz's uh, second cousin was Donald Trump's grandfather, uh, Frederick Heinz, or Frederick uh, Trump. So uh, Donald Trump and H.J. Hines were second cousins twice removed. So I learned something too, and I hope I taught you something. And um, hope to have more of these little conversations in the future about different things I find interesting. Uh, please comment if you know anything additional you want to add to this whole conversation. And in the meantime, wait till the next movie. Thank you. Pittsburgh town is a smoky old town, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh town is a smoky old town, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh town is a smoky old town, solid iron from the keys port down. Pittsburgh, Lord God, Pittsburgh. Well, what did Jones and Laughlin steal? Pittsburgh. What did Jones and Laughlin steal? Pittsburgh. Walked to Jones and Lachlan Steel Up and down the river just as far as you could see In Pittsburgh, Lord God, Pittsburgh